Hello, welcome back to the channel. And it's Friday, so I'm continuing my solar journey. And today, the video is based on a question that I had from someone called Matt Kirk, who commented under my review of November solar generation, um, which was basically asked the questions, are solar panels worth it in the UK winter? And uh, Matt wrote, uh, Welcome a video on whether it's worth increasing the amount of batteries to reduce energy import versus reduction in export payments, which seems small by comparison. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to at least try and answer part of that question. This question is actually quite complex when you actually get into the details of it and also trying to model it because of the number of variables involved. So I'm going to start off with, I'm assuming from his question that he already has some way of producing his own energy, whether that's more, probably more than likely solar panels, but it could also be wind turbines, for example. But let's say solar panels. But I'm going to start off by, uh, and, uh, by looking at this question from the point of view, if you don't have solar panels or your own way of generating electricity, is it worth getting a battery system? Um, so... The idea of a battery system is that you can store energy and then use it when you uh, need it. So if you just had a battery system installed without doing anything else, it's not worth it because it makes no difference when you charge. It costs you the same uh, for your electricity. However, if you're on a variable tariff, and a, when I say variable tariff, it varies throughout the day, something like um, Economy 7 or Economy 10 or the Octopus Go tariff, or even the Octopus Agile tariff, which the prices fluctuate from day to day on half hour um, periods, um, then a battery system starts to make quite an attractive option. So I've had a quick scan around of all the different battery systems, such as GrowWatt, uh, Pure Drive, um, Fox, all these sort of uh, battery systems. And in general, the price of them costs between £500 per kilowatt hour to £1,000 per kilowatt hour. They vary depending on manufacturer and what deals you have. If you get it as part of a solar installation, then um, you get reduction in VAT. So it depends what they have. Some of these, when you look online, some of them have installation included. Some of them you'll need an extra inverter. You may have an inverter. So that is a rough uh, price guide. Um, so this might be how much you invest. So say if you put a 5 uh, kilowatt hour battery in it's going to cost you between um, £2,500 and £5,000 so uh, let's uh, take the Octopus uh, Go tariff as an example to work out what the savings could be if you had a battery system installed so let's say that you had a battery system that was installed which was big enough to um, supply a full day's electricity to your house and let's say your average on um, you use 10 kilowatt hours per day so realistically you'd need probably about a 12 kilowatt hour battery for that because you have state of disk charge which means you can't use the last 10 percent of your battery in some cases so you can work out the price of that if you have a 12 kilowatt hour battery it's probably going to cost you about six thousand pounds at the cheapest um, probably more like um, eight or nine um, realistically and let's say you're using 10 kilowatt hours per day of electricity. And therefore, if you're on the current government price cap of 34p, you're spending £3.40 on electricity import a day, excluding the standing charge. And if we get a calculator out and we multiply that up by a year, so um, 0.34 multiplied by 10, multiplied by uh, 365 you would be pay paying 2000 sorry 1241 pounds um just for grid import per year however if you're on one of those tariffs where you can import cheap at night so the octopus i think is currently at about uh, 12p per kilowatt hour um that means you could charge your battery up at night over that four hours when it's cheap and then use the electricity throughout the day. So you're effectively saving 22p per kilowatt hour, which um, over the course of a year 
is £803. So if you are spending £8,000 on a battery system, it would pay back in 10 years, um, not including inflation or what you could do with interest rates and stuff like that. So having a battery system does make sense. Um, we sh I should also point out that um, it's predicted that the price cap will go up in April and maybe drop slightly um, in October this year. Um, that's not confirmed, obviously, but it's what um, I've seen from some predictions um, on the internet. So that 34p might go up, but then again, so much that 12p. And obviously, um, I had somebody else comment on one of my videos where they were only paying 5p for import during the uh, reduced hours rate. So there's um, a lot of uh, variance there, but you can see the sort of general savings, and that's just by having a battery uh, system fitted with no solar panels. Right, now we come on to uh, Matt's, uh, Kurt's uh, question. And as I say, this is very complicated because there is a huge number of variables involved, which includes how big the battery you have at the moment is, what your daily use of electricity is, what your daily solar generation is, what tariff um, you're on, and also, whereabouts in the country you are and how many days of sun you have, followed by how many days of no sun you have. So, when you buy a solar panel system and battery system, this is something that I found. Buy a battery, buy the biggest battery you can afford and that you can fit. Um, it's also uh, worth... Um, just looking if you do fancy exp uh, expanding a battery at a later period um, you may be limited by the battery you already have so you if you want to chain batteries together which you can you are recommended and it's probably a very good idea to use the same batteries um, so the same manufacturer and the same battery because that way they match the power they match um, the output they match the storage and everything works well together uh, so you can't mix and match batteries, um, or you can't mix and match them easily. Um, other options are that you actually, if you have a battery system, you sell the battery and you buy a new battery. Or, um, I'm not sure if there is something like this on the market, um, I haven't been able to find one, but that's a switching system where it measures how much charge is in a battery, um, and if it's full, it then switches to charging another battery. Um, that sort of system should be fairly easy to do. The difficult part is getting that switch to also talk to your inverter because your inverter needs to be told what type of battery you have and therefore the switch would have to actually interact with the inverter and change the software settings within the inverter. So I'm not sure if that's actually on market at the moment. Um, if you are sizing a battery, it's best to go for a battery, which I say is probably about the same as the amount of average energy you use a day. So, what are the savings? So, again, we have to make a couple of assumptions here. Let's assume you uh, you are importing at that 34p um, price cap and you're exporting at the sort of average uh, export tariff, which is about 5p at the moment. There are some which are higher. Again, if you're on Octopus and you export to Octopus, then you can get about 15p, I think it is. Um, however, if you... Um, most companies only charge, uh, only give you about 5p per kilowatt hour, and that's what I'm on here. So it means that the, if you can use the electricity as opposed to exporting it, you are saving that 34p minus 5p, which is 29p per kilowatt hour. The next thing to consider is how much capacity would you have in your battery to store electricity? Um, by adding that extra battery. So let's say you had a 10 kilowatt hour battery system or you could already, and that's how much you were using today, and you put in another 10 kilowatt hour battery, which as I said, would cost probably about, let's take the average at seven and a half thousand pounds. Um, it might be a bit cheaper because you don't have to go for the full install if you already have the inverter. So there's a lot of uh, thing to consider there. So the problem that you may have, depending on how much solar you generate, is when the excess is generated. So let's say uh, you're generating in the height of summer, say June time, and you um, 
Use 10 kilowatt hours a day, but you're producing 20 or 25. I say 25. So normally you'd use your 10 kilowatt hours, so you'd be saving yourself three pounds forty, um, and then you'd export that um, 15 uh, excess kilowatt hours back to the grid at 5p. So five times 15 is 75. So 75p. So it's 100. Uh, it's four pounds 5p a day that you're effectively making there. If you had that extra battery, you could save that extra. Uh, 10 of that 15 kilowatts for a rainy, rainy day or a cloudy day. Um, of course, that in the summer, that might be a week away. Um, but it means that you'd have actually saved that, well, you wouldn't have, you'd have, in this case, you'd have saved 29p per kilowatt hour or £2.90 that you wouldn't have otherwise um, spent on import. So this is the problem with these trying to work out the calculations from this is how many days of solar do, uh, do you have? So ideally what you'd want is have a really good day of solar where you're producing 20 kilowatt hours, store that extra 10 and then have a really clouded day where you're producing nothing and then have another solar day where you can charge both your batteries back up and cycle it like that. But unfortunately our weather is nothing like that. So in the summer you're producing excess every day and you're still exporting. Um, so if I look at my... Uh, data from last year where um, obviously um, I only had my solar panels installed in August but let's assume that um, and if you looked at my uh, year recap video um, I'm gonna make the same assumption I made there which that uh, which is that December is roughly equal to January November is equal to February March is equal to October September is equal to April August May and June and July about the same. So August, May, June and July, we get so much solar generation, you're not actually going to be making that much savings. You might, you know, two or three times that to £2.90, so let's call it £9. Uh, in September, which we'll say is the same as um, April, we were still getting a lot of export, but the amount of import per day was very very low there was only sort of one day where it would have actually really benefited us to actually store that extra energy and it was only about five kilowatts so it's an extra day there so actually um i've just made a mistake if it's three pounds a day you were saving roughly four days that's 12 pounds plus that extra couple of days then you might be up to you know 18 20 pounds and then when you get to the october October again we'll get a lot of export a few more extra days where we could have had an extra space in the battery to store some electricity for later in the month um, so let's actually take the amount of import and let's say we managed to save it because October is still a reasonably good month for sun so that would have been 31 um, so I get another nine pounds so let's say that's the same as March, so 18. So up to about £36 a year. In um, November, which would be the same as February, we only exported an excess of 40 kilowatt hours, um, which then um, some days were really good. So it was over the amount we could have actually probably actually saved. So um, let's say we could do another 30 on that. So that's another nine pounds, another 18. So uh, 18 to 36 is up to about 54 pounds a year. And December was even worse um, for our um, amount of export. We had export on that only about 14. And let's say it was 10 of that. So another £9, so another 18 for the whole year. So what would that be, about £72 a year? In which case, if you spent £7,000 on a battery, it would take 100 years to pay off. So adding an extra battery may not be actually worth it. What you may actually look to do to actually save you, um, better export is actually uh, have an electric car. Um, and finding one that does a vehicle to load which can export back to your house so if you do get that access you can charge your car from it and if you have got that access in the car you can always use it to power your house back that's 
probably a better option. Other options is maybe looking at heating systems. So if you have a gas heater, maybe get an, an electric heater and uh, on the days where you have excess, uh, maybe turn that on to heat the house. Um, other things might be put in a, uh, if you have an immersion boiler, using your heat to, uh, or using your solar excess just to put into the water storage. Those are probably better options from a financial point of view. So from those sort of really rough calculations that I've just done in my head, you're probably not going to save more than £100 a year on a uh, 10 kilowatt hour day of usage. If you have a bit more usage, yes, you might get save a bit more. If you have, uh, if you can put a really big solar, if you can put a, uh, have a really big solar array and you're generating a lot of excess uh, and you can also have really big batteries and you can afford that, then again, might be uh, able to save it for later in the year. Um, so that is pretty much uh, the answer to Matt's question. It's up to you whether that actual saving is worth it and that actually pay back on the battery. Um, of course, if you have any other questions, um, please put them down in the comments or uh, ask any questions and I'll have a go at answering them. Um, oh, one thing I didn't actually cover was if you do get that extra, so let's say your current battery isn't as big as your daily usage and you did export, expand up, then you could also take advantage of those uh, cheaper tariffs. So then that might make the payback a little bit better for you. It's something to consider. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you in another video very soon.